Hi, Kevin Blanche. Today I want to talk about a marquee, the greatest day in American history by scholars, historians. I call it twofold. June 6, 1944, the greatest day, at least in the last 100 years, maybe ever in America. The greatest secret mission ever. My uncle raised me was on that mission. D-Day. One other key date that I think is marquee when it comes to progressives, liberals, how this country has evolved. 1968, same day, the assassination by a stall mucking shit shoveler freaking from Santa Anita, Bobby Kennedy. Those two dates changed this world for the best through valor and fight to the worst. When I talk about progressives and liberals, conservatives, do not confuse that with Democrats and Republicans. There are no liberals in this country. There are no liberals in the Senate. There are no liberals in the Congress. None. Zero. Well, I take it back. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, he calls himself an independent. Look, the two-party system we devised, our forefathers devised, was one brilliant system. Brilliant men like Adams and Jefferson and Hamilton. All of them. Brilliant. Brilliant. But it can't work when religion takes over. Radical religion philosophy takes over our contemporized economics. I base all of this comes right down to economics. I am schooled in socioeconomics. I have a PhD in socioeconomics. I am mentored by two of the greatest economists in world history who mentored me as a boy and as an adult, took me by the hand and led the way. I'm, you know, I'll get into more on that in my book when it comes out. But when it comes to e economics and the Federal Reserve, my PhD is in the Federal Reserve. Believe it or not, the Federal Reserve was a very socialized institution until the day Green's man took over. Look, if you do not believe this is a philosophical battle, what's going on in jobs, we had tariffs from 1776 all the way to 94. I think the greatest metaphor as we look back, as a historian looks back at 2034 or, you know, 2044 or whatever, he's going to come back, was Bill Clinton when he said, Newt Gingrich, contract on America. How poignant was that? How true. We always had tariffs. We had a philosophy, and believe it or not, right in this community, Mormon community who roves from, there are Mormons and Catholics. This is a very Christian community. Not just in the Mormon community, in the Catholicism. There are guys coming out that are smart people who are starting to say that Rove is the Antichrist. Seriously. They're starting to even hate him right here. So there is a crack in the armor. He was smart enough to put this whole thing together to indoctrinate the Republican Party into religious theology, and he took this country by storm. For 1994, there was a, when Reagan got elected, there was no debt. We were liberals. We were liberals. And if you people say, oh, the, you know, the, the liberals and Democrats, bullshit. I'm not talking Democrats. I'm not a part of Republicans. The liberals, via the Federal Reserve, via an economic policy. From night, let's be clear. Let's be clear. When FDR took over and this thing evolved, from 1940s, to 1980, the strongest middle class in the history, not of the history of the night, in the history of the world. The richest society in world history. World history, not America, world history. Via the liberals. The liberals had this, and if, so when I hear this, all oh, the, the, the two parties, yeah, the two parties, are because they're not liberals and freaking conservatives. They're conservatives. That's all we have. Harry Reid, who is the head of the Senate, is one of the biggest conservative, the most conservative man. I know him. He's a Mormon from here. He's so conservative. There are no liberals. There's one, Bernie Sanders. He calls himself an independent. The Democrats were on their way to get liberals back in. Howard Dean, the first strong liberal we've had since Johnson or Kennedy or FDR or Truman. The first one. You see what the Democrats did? They booted him for Tim Kaine. Now, Tim Kaine, I like Tim Kaine. I like him, fair enough. But he's not a strong freaking progressive. He's not a progressive. I watched an interview with Howard Dean when he was running for president. They interviewed his wife. And she's like, you know, for my birthday, she asked me what I want. She says, I want to go on a bike ride. And I'm like, boy, do I love that woman. This guy has got his shit together. That's what a progressive is. Progressives think they're strong. And here's the part problem, economically. You people want to get all fucking venomous saying, oh, the, the two-party system don't work. Yeah, how can it work when it's freaking contemporized by religious radicals? We've turned into a religious radical country. Fake Christians, they're not Christians. They just fake and use it. Rove showed them a way. No taxes, no taxes. Go to war on the drop of a hat. Pay for everything. But let's get clear about the economy and our fucking jobs. NAFTA. We had tariffs. Read what Hamilton and Jefferson and Washington and Adams, every one of them, read what they said. They said the same thing I've been saying. We must have tariffs. 
in order to protect ourselves from China then. We're losing everything to China. Even if we invent something here, China just takes it. They're more innovative than we ever dreamed of being because they're going after it. It comes down to one thing, pure economics, just how Hamilton said it, the true great economist of our country. Just like he said it, cheap labor. That is the root of this. Do not kid yourself. This philosophy on the border, this philosophy about we will not clean up illegal immigration, it's the exploiters, not the exploited. Why? Because it's about cheap labor. Cheap labor, that's what China is about cheap labor. When we pass NAFTA in 1994, we'll look in history, 2034, 2044, 2054, as we look back, will be the dagger that slit America's throat. I said it then, I say it now. We had tariffs from 76 all the way. I hear people come back, oh, we had, we had free market capitalism in the 1800s. Bullshit. Bullshit. And I hear, oh, we flattened the world. Bullshit. Oh, no. Chinese goods come that we blocked them because they outnumber us. They have a they have a billion freaking population of slave labor. They're communists. They enslaved their labor, child labor, everything we fought for. The Italian and the Irish rose up via strength. I mean, it was ugly. You don't think that we got all this middle class that was so powerful. You think we got it passively? You think they got it nice? They, we got it through blood. It was freaking ugly. The Irish and Italians stood up. It was really ugly. We had the strongest middle class when the liberals, when the liberals read the Fed. I'm talking eco economics. I'm a socioeconomist. I'm talking economics. I have a PhD in the Fed. The man who ran the whole Fed, who devised the whole Fed, mentored me as a boy. He was very close to me. I'll get into this, like I said, as my book comes out. Look, as long as we do not have tariffs, we cannot compete. We cannot compete with 37 cents an hour or 28 cents an hour. It's an impossible equation. And as they get more powerful, we still consume 25% of the world's goods produced. Think about that. Think about that. There's only 308 million of us. Think about it. Out of 7 billion, we consume 25%. If we were making the old things that we consume, we would be rich, stinking rich. How can we cure this? And if we don't do this now, we are going by the wayside quickly and fastly. This thing, they says, oh, Chinese economy is going to pass us in 10 years. Oh, no, they're going to pass us in a few years, and then military might comes next. And if you don't believe military fight, follows economic play. You know nothing about human nature. You know nothing about fucking history. It always does. And uh, trust me, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get freaking ugly. You know that. I know that. Who did this? The same people that are running the ads, China's going to take over the Neil Khan hairsprayed fake right. That's who did this. We need liberals. We need strong freaking liberals. We don't have any. You think Barack Obama's a liberal? You're crazy. He's a conservative. We don't have any strong liberals. Until we throw down the gauntlet on NAFTA, we put 25% tariffs coming into this freaking country, we can fix this overnight. Look, our middle class has been gutted. It's been destroyed. People make a $10,000, $50,000 an year do not pay taxes. None. You think about all these great unions we had, these people that were working in the meat cutting industry and in whatever industry, the auto industry. They paid a lot of taxes. They drove beautiful GMs. They educated their children for our great schools because we had a tax base that could handle it. Stay with me, Kevin Blanche.